coffee with Scott Adams. Grab your mug, simultaneous sip, coming up. Oh, good stuff. Hello, hello. Well, it's been a newsy couple of days, has it not? So the news I'm reading today is that Jeff Sessions uh, will will uh, make some changes in the federal approach to state laws about marijuana. Now, you know, you probably do, that if he decided that the federal government was going to go hard at marijuana, that I would flip like a switch and try to bring down the uh, current administration as best I could. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think what's going to happen is he's just going to kick it to the states and let the states decide. If he does that, I would consider that just constitutionally acceptable and it wouldn't make any difference in California, where I live. Um, so I, I think we need to wait and see what he says. If the only thing he says is I'm going to keep the federal government out of it and the states can work it out on their own, then I would say, eh, no real change, no problem. If he says we're going to uh, aggressively prosecute marijuana, even though states <laughs> think it's legal, well, then Jeff Sessions and I have a big problem. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to happen. Let's talk about bomb cyclones. Has anybody ever heard the phrase bomb cyclone before this year? I've heard of bad weather. You know, I, I moved down to the Northeast. I, used, I grew up in upstate New York. And I moved because the weather was so bad. And that was before I ever heard the words bomb cyclone used together. I mean, I left there because of the weather before bomb cyclones became a thing. Well, I don't want to be anywhere where there might even be a bomb cyclone. Yesterday there was a, an earthquake down the road for me, which I didn't feel, but it was a 4.4. I will take the earthquake every time. Please give me the earthquake. Earthquake, please. No bomb cyclones for me. Now, the bong, B-O-N-G, cyclone, as somebody just noted, whole different story. And do you know what you really need if you've got a bomb cyclone coming? What is the one supply that you need to get yourself through that? Well, I'm thinking legal marijuana. So Jeff Sessions better talk to the weather people and work something out here because if I'm sitting inside for a week trying to ride down a bomb cyclone, I don't want to do it without weed. All right, so what else we got going on here? So we've got this Michael Wolf story, uh, or his book, Fire and Fury, which he will sell many copies. I'm reading a lot about his credibility based on past uh, quotes that he has manufactured, according to other people. I'd have to say his credibility is really, really low. <laughs> I'm not sure you can believe anything in that book. <laughs> Which is not to say that it's all false, but I don't think you can believe it. Um, yeah. All right, what else we got in the news right now? Um, this has been the this has been the most newsy first week of January I've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, Mooch said Team America three times, yeah. Team America is is a phrase I thought we'd see more of. Um, now, what, what else we got going here? We've got so much news. We've got... Uh, we, it, it's funny what things people think are illegal. One of the things that people think must be illegal 
is Don Jr. talking to Russians to get information about Hillary Clinton during the campaign. And I'm no lawyer, but it seems to me that listening to information can't be illegal. Now, if you're an insider trading and you listen to information and then you trade on it, it's the trading that's the illegal part, right? It's not the hearing the bad information that you shouldn't trade on, it's the trading. But in the, in the instance of a national election, if somebody hears information from any source, from Russia, from the mafia, from North Korea, what matters is if it's true or false and what you do about it. So it's weird that people think that that could even be potentially illegal to hear information. I don't want to live in a world where listening to someone, no matter who they are, could be somehow illegal. The, the other thing that's baffling me is uh, you're hearing the phrase money laundering uh, about the Trump businesses. But when you read what they mean by l money laundering, what they mean is that other people who got money in ways that may not be savory are buying things you're selling. Now, again, I'm no lawyer, <clears throat> but on what, in what universe does a person selling a product need to be in charge of knowing where the money came from? All right. In my world, that cannot be illegal. It cannot be illegal to sell a product that you are legally selling. In the case of the Trumps, they were selling uh, apartments within buildings. Now, there's evidence that perhaps many of those were purchased by people who were themselves laundering money. But selling a product to somebody who has money can't be illegal. That just can't be illegal. <laughs> We'd all be in jail. I mean, Apple, how many Apple iPhones have been sold to drug dealers? Probably a lot, right? But should Apple go to jail because they're, they're aiding drug dealers? No, <laughs> I don't think so. It can't be illegal to sell a legal product to somebody who got their money in an unsavory way. Um, so, but it's interesting that because these, these issues are complicated and people don't understand licensing deals and they don't understand real estate deals, they don't understand money laundering. So if the, if the anti-Trumpers just sort of put all those concepts in one sentence, there will be plenty of people who say to themselves, well, there must be something going on because what about all that smoke? With all that smoke, there must be fire. You know, the, uh, that old saying, with that much um, smoke, there must be fire. Uh, that saying came before the mainstream media or before mass media, not the mainstream media. Because as long as you have mass media, the mass media's business model depends on creating smoke where there is none. Um, years ago, in my, it's probably more than 15 years ago, 20 years ago, I wrote in my book, The Dilbert of Future, that the business model of the news industry would, would make them start killing people to make stories. That they'll just start killing people to make stories. Now, they may not be doing it uh, with guns, but you can see a lot of lives being destroyed by the media to feed their business model. Um, well, let's talk about, so I saw a funny tweet. I don't know who it came from, but uh, I'll just say that uh, it was funny and full credit to whoever thought of it. So somebody on Twitter pointed out that uh, you can't have a much worse reputation. This is talking about the the small fire at the Clinton home, which apparently started in the bedroom. Uh, somebody pointed out that uh, you can't have a worse reputation 
then when there's a fire at your house, the first thing that people think is that you're destroying evidence. <laughs> if there's a fire at your house, and the very first thing people think is that you're destroying evidence of your crimes, your reputation is not so good. I, I'm thinking that's, you know, that's not a indication that she'll be winning in 2020. Now, when I heard there was a fire in the bedroom, the first thing I thought is, uh, are you, you telling me those two dried up twigs try to have sex? You know, you rub enough dried up twigs against each other, you're gonna start a fire. So it could be that, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently Bill Clinton went without sex for a week and uh, he, he got a little, he got a little active if you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> has anybody ever described uh, Hillary Clinton as quote, Flinty? <laughs> That's an insult, right? When people call somebody flinty? What does that mean? I'm going to have to look that up. Flinty. Uh, of containing reminiscent of flint. Oh, somebody who is hard and unyielding. They're flinty. That is a word. <clears throat> he lit the cigar this time. <laughs> Energetic, yeah, that's a good word. <laughs> All right, what else, what other news we got going here? Let's let's check out CNN, see what they've got going. Uh, wow, Dow Dow is up. CBS fires and political director. Who was that? Who is there? Uh, yes, it, yo, He-Man. Yeah. Give us one good Sorry reason we shouldn't vanquish you to another dimension. Hear me out. Switching to Geico could... Damn pop-up commercials. Uh, so some of you think the Trump-Bannon thing is all planned. I'm not going to go that far. It doesn't look planned to me. But I also wouldn't rule it out, but it seems pretty, uh, pretty unusual. Yeah, we talked about Jeff Sessions. Uh, I think he's just going to bump, um, the decisions down to the States. I don't think it's going to be, be a big reversal in the way that you think it will be. Let me put it this way. If Jeff Sessions if the if the big announcement today, and I'm predicting this will not happen, but if the big pronouncement today is that Jeff Sessions is going to go hard at states over over weed, where it's legal, that would just be the biggest dumbass mistake anybody ever made in the history of government. That would be like a monumental mistake, a mistake of epic proportions. So it might be interpreted that way, but I think uh, the truth will be he'll just bump it to the states, which would be consistent with um, it would be consistent with Republican philosophy, and that would not look so bad. <clears throat> well, pulling the coal memo m might be only part of the story. Talk about the golden age, yes. Well, I think we're going to see a golden age in medical technology. Lots of developments happening. I think we're going to see a golden age in understanding how humans are wired and that we're not rational. This is something science has known for a long time, but the, the population is understanding this now for the first time. And it will make you act differently and in a good way. Um, I think the... The economy is probably going to go to its best point ever. And I think that we, we may see peace breaking out uh, all over the place. So it's too early to say, but I've got a feeling that it's going to be a more peaceful world. Um,
What is my best producing stock? Well, over the long haul, um, and this is not financial advice, uh, my best stock is um, an index fund of the Fortune 500. But I've also owned Apple for a while, and I do own some Bitcoins that are crazy. Through a fund, I own Bitcoin. Um, and I own some biotech index funds, which have been amazing. <laughs> did I buy Apple in 1996? Nah, I wish I did. <clears throat> Black Mirror on Netflix. All right, so I watched... Black Mirror, several episodes last night with Christina, because everybody in the world keeps telling me, you have to watch this TV show called Black Mirror. It's amazing. So I've watched four episodes now. Uh, bearing in mind that uh, entertainment is a completely subjective thing. So the fact that many people like this show is proof positive that it's a good show. All right, so my opinion of the show is not related to the fact that it's very popular and therefore, objectively speaking, it's a great show because people love it. So that's the end of the story of whether it's good or bad. My personal opinion is that I didn't like it even a little bit. I thought I would because everybody keeps telling me it's a, it's a show I like. But it, it moves like molasses. <coughs> it's... <coughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's dark it's unhappy and it's way too boring in, in terms of its pace it just is so slow um but that's my personal opinion there are so many people who really like it that i would actually recommend it so apparently it's it's designed for people who like that sort of thing and uh, apparently they do a good job Westworld was much better. I like that, at least much better from my subjective point of view. Roger is out. Who's Roger? Do you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm? Yes, I do. It's one of, one of the best ever. Um, what's my favorite show? Uh, <laughs> the, you might laugh when I say this, so I'm going to tell you my favorite TV show, and, and I want you to know in advance that I'm not joking. Um, my favorite show, the one that I record and make sure I watch every day, is uh, The Five. So on Fox News, at, I think 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, so 2 p.m. on my coast. Uh, there's the five people on The Five uh, who talk about the news in often humorous ways. And what I like about this show is that it is, um, it feels like they're in your living room. So the, the genius of how they compose that show is that they 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 got these really strong personalities who for the most part can all take a joke <laughs> and and they're willing to you know give a joke and take a joke at the same time and because the five personalities are so different from each other um you know you can see some might be a little more like the others but not really they're they're five people chosen because they're different and they're all interesting. So to me, that's, that's the show that grabs me the most. Um, somebody asked about, um, oh, I'm watching, I'm watching it also on Amazon, The Man in the High Castle. And I enjoy it, except that they, they shoot the whole thing in the shade. Everything is either at night or the room is darkened. 
So I put it in a, a little box on my computer when I'm working, if I'm just drawing, and I don't have to do any thinking. I have that playing in my headphones and the little box on my computer. Most of the time, when you shrink the screen to a little box on that show, it's nothing but a black box. <laughs> you can't see anything. You can't see any of the faces. You can just hear it. It's like a radio show. <clears throat> and I have no idea what's actually going on. I've, I've watched most of the first season I have only a vague idea what the characters are up to because I can't actually see them. So I hear them talking and I can't tell, is that the woman who was also in the other scene? Or is this a different woman who looks like this woman? I have no idea. If you can't actually see the screen, it's a tough show to watch. And yet I love it. Uh, I would say that I enjoy it a lot without having any idea what's going on. Uh, I had the same feeling about uh, Game of Thrones. I, I used to love watching Game of Thrones without knowing, without any idea what was going on half the time. I just liked the scenes. Orville. I tried to watch that and I couldn't tell if Orville was even trying to be funny. Uh, I mean that seriously, and not as an insult. I think it's a comedy. The show is called Orville. It's sort of a takeoff on Star Trek. But I watched it for a long time, and I didn't see anything that looked like they were even trying to make a joke. So when I was done, I didn't know what I'd actually watched. But I'm going to watch it again because um, I, I like the idea. I like Seth. He's good. Um... Sometimes comedy, sometimes drama. All right. <laughs> um, is there any, anything else happening that you need to comment on? When is Jeff Sessions going to make his announcement? Because that's sort of, that's all I'm going to care about today, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> Would you want to be a guest on The Five? The Five doesn't do guests. I think that's part of why I like that show. So The Five keeps the, the focus on the personalities of the five co-hosts who are picked because they're interesting people. They're, they all have great camera presence. Um, they all have tons of experience. They all know a lot. And what makes these new shows not work lots of times is the guest. Because lots of times the guest is just a, a shill for this side or that, and there's just nothing happening. It's like, okay, this one's a, a, a Democrat. You already know what they're going to say because they got the talking points. But the five gets to talk about what they feel like, and they're all more interesting than any of their guests would be. You know, Individually, they're more interesting, and together they're far more interesting. <clears throat> Uh, kicking back to states is verified. Okay. Yeah, if that's all Jeff Sessions does, I don't know, I'd have to find out more, more about what the implications of that are. But my first thought is that it's a big nothing. Well, Geraldo was on as a co-host, not as a guest, per se. He was filling in for somebody. That's slightly different. Um... Romney, yeah, if Romney runs, I guess he'll win. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, CNN always starts his interviews with, are you worried that the president did X? <laughs> Talk about leading the witness. Instead of just talking about X, you start with, are you worried about the mental health of our president who decided to do whatever, doesn't matter. It would be interesting if Fox News tried to counter-program that, and every time they had any comment about an anti-Trumper, that they preceded it with, should we be worried about the mental health of, and just put that before every single story and every quote that comes out from an anti-Trumper, should we be concerned about the mental capacity of Antifa? Because we've watched them protest, and yet 
They're, what they're asking for, according to a panel of psychologists, is not rational. So are we seeing a number of people with serious mental problems who have formed a political movement? You know, if, if all you did is preceded every question with a question about mental health, you would start to think every Democrat was literally insane, you know, if you watched that network long enough. <laughs> Let, let's, let's try this. I'm going to go, let's see, I'm going to go back to the CNN homepage. And I'm going to randomly pick uh, a story in which there is featured a prominent Democrat. Oh, here we go. Uh, Colbert rallies for Trump's fake news awards. All right, so Colbert is trying to counter-program the president's fake news awards ready for a healthy dose of flavor. by, uh, so Colbert is, is sort of amplifying it and sort of trying to make it his own. So he's trying to reframe it in a way that he can make it entertaining instead of being the butt of the entertainment. So let me, let me do this. If I were interviewing somebody about Colbert, using the funk, fake news awards to mock the president, I would say, should we, be wor should we be worried about Stephen Colbert's mental health, that he would have a show about a fake show? Should we be worried that Stephen Colbert can't tell the difference between a real award show and a fake one? No, of course he can, but it would be funny if every time, every time anybody who's a Democrat came on, somebody said, should we be worried about their mental health? Um, why no comment on Steve Bannon? Um, I'll comment on Steve Bannon. So Steve Bannon allegedly said, that uh, that uh, the Don Jr. was being unpatriotic and treasonous to talk to Russians. Two possibilities. Let's say three possibilities. One possibility, he didn't say that. So the first possibility is that nothing like that ever actually happened. That that Bannon just never said that. Second possibility. He was drunk. I mean, it's possible. And, and it would explain everything you saw, right? <laughs> I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying that if he had been drunk, it would certainly explain why he said something that you wouldn't expect him to say under normal conditions. The other possibility is that uh, he's just mad at the president and lashing out in every possible way because he's mad at some other thing or he's mad at Don Jr. for whatever from the past. So it could be just hyperbole. Uh, but what it's not is terribly important, except, except that it probably gives the president some cover because one of, his, one of the president's biggest problems was that Bannon was such a uh, lightning rod for negative thoughts about race in particular, that uh, putting some distance between Trump and Bannon is almost certainly good for the president. It's almost certainly good. And what would be the one way that you would be absolutely positive that that, that distance is real and can never be fixed? What's the one thing that Bannon could do or say that would guarantee that he and President Trump could never be friends again? Go after one of his kids. If you go after somebody's kids, you're dead forever. Like that's, that's, that is a one-way street. <laughs> There's no situation in which those two uh, get back together and say, yeah, let's, let's work together now. Can't happen. Now, is it a coincidence that Bannon said the one kind of thing that could guarantee they could never work together again? It might be a coincidence, 
But of all the things you could say to criticize the administration or even the president himself, that would be the one place you wouldn't go unless you intended to make this permanent. So in my mind, it's permanent. There, there is no scenario in which they can go back to working on the same side. And, and calling it treason is hyperbole. It's not a legal opinion. Uh, <laughs> I don't think the left has embraced Bannon, but what it, ha what it has done is it has freed Bannon uh, also for his own purposes. This is like a WWF script. Yes, it is. <laughs> I, I was going to say that, uh, but you beat me to it. I wasn't going to say it today, but I've been planning a, um, a periscope on the topic of how much President Trump uh, plays the role of a, a wrestling star, someone whose personality is, is bigger than average. Uh, and I don't think that's a total coincidence because wrestling is you know, one of the many influences the, the president uh, has been around. So it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me at all if, if on some level he has at least once thought of it in those terms. I mean, there's more to it than that, but uh, it, it could be an influence. <laughs> Is the Bannon-Trump thing staged for the media? Um, the only thing I can say for sure is that it, uh, it, it looks like it on some level. In other words, you know, if you were going to fake, um, fake a fight, I suppose it could look like that. No, it wouldn't look like that. Because, no, here's why it's not. And would somebody fact check me on this? It, uh, Bannon's comments are in the book, right? And a book takes a long time to go from idea to book. So if it came from the book, that's as close as you can get to proof that it's not staged. Because if you were going to stage such a thing, you would do it in real time. In other words, if, if it were a fake fight, Bannon would say it on TV for the first time today. You know, he would come out today and say, I've got this problem with blah, 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 or he'd do an interview today. What he wouldn't do, and nobody would do, nobody would be dumb enough to have this bad plan, is to do an interview months, months before you know the book is going to come out and then wait for it to come out and maybe get leaked as it has before the book is published. You know, you can't control the leak. You can't control the timing of the book. It would be the worst plan in the world. So no, uh, I'll, I'll give you now my firm opinion based on timing that it is not a staged fight. It's a real one. Um, if it's game, it's a terrible one because of the timing of it. You just wouldn't play a game that poorly. And yeah, you wouldn't go after somebody's kids if you were just playing around. You'd go after the policies. Rand Paul tweeted, progress on health care for small businesses. Really? Well, now you have my interest. Uh, there are some surprises coming for healthcare. If you'd like a prediction, here's a prediction for 2018. First half, first half of 2018, and maybe maybe sooner than later, there will be some new thinking about healthcare, and probably a lot of it. Okay. So those of you who are tracking my predictions. Uh, this one isn't so much a prediction as insider knowledge. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me be as transparent as possible. Uh, I am aware of new thinking on the topic of healthcare that will be very interesting. And you'll be seeing it coming out in the next few months or so. 
Now, whether that new thinking leads to new decisions or what or whatnot uh, is harder to say. But I can tell you that 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 narrow channel that we've been in, which is that healthcare is just a question of whether we pay more or less for it, that that um, that frame will be broken, and the creativity of the country will be unleashed in the next few months in a way you've never seen. Now, one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the things I always track for any topic is the unintended consequences. So if you were to say, how did the government do on health care? I think just about everybody on both sides would say, well, the government totally screwed up on the health care back months ago when they were dealing with it. They did everything wrong. I think that would be accurate, meaning Congress failed. But both sides failed. The Democrats didn't offer anything. The Republicans didn't get something passed. It was a complete and utter failure. Now, typically, when you have a complete and utter failure of, of that type, you also learn something. And one of the things we learned is that the reason it failed is because it, it had to. There was just no way you could do everything you wanted affordably in that narrow channel of ideas. There just was, there was no there there. There was nothing to go to. It was a sea with no island to climb on top of. There was no solution within the narrow channel where everybody's minds were locked into. You know, these are our only options. Let's stay within this narrow channel. And then it was just impossible, so I failed. But once you failed, it opens up creativity. Because all the people who were just watching before and saying, all right, well, it's either going to be more taxes or less taxes, but that's sort of all that's going to happen. Um, all those people are saying, well, wait, let's, what if we change the way we do things? What if we, what if we think differently? What if we organize differently? What if we get rid of this regulation? What if we add this regulation? What if we add this funding or this... So suddenly you're going to see a level of creative thinking on the topic that we wouldn't have had without that spectacular failure. Now, uh, nobody, including me, roots for failure. All right? you, can't, you can't say in advance, hey, I sure hope that health care bill fails spectacularly because then something good will happen. That's, you know, that's, a, that's a hard optimism to hold. Um, but now that it has failed, we can be free from it, right? So the failure has happened. Failure creates opportunity, right? Every time something fails bad, all the, the entrepreneurs, the thinkers, the creative people, uh, as soon as they see a gigantic failure, they go, boom, and they wake up. You know, it's like, a, it's like Alexa. Alexa. Give me a compliment. Let's give a compliment. Your eyes are breathtaking. Yeah. <clears throat> so failure is almost like a wake-up code for creativity. There are people all over the country, and I'm one of them, who when it failed, I said to myself, oh, well, now I will apply my creativity to this thing because it's, it's fair game now. It wasn't fair game before. Because before it was just some boring Congress problem. But now I say, well, why, why can't I think about it? Um, you know, why not? Why not put some thought into this? <laughs> Alexa, who is the President of the United States? The U.S. President is Donald Trump. Alexa, who is Scott Adams? Here's something I found on Wikipedia. John Adams was an American statesman who served as the second president of the United States and the first vice president. Did that answer your question? No. Thanks for your feedback. <laughs> <clears throat> All right.
right, I want all of you if, you, if you have one of those devices whose names I will not say, A-L-E-X-A, -E I want you to put your uh, screen next to it. I'm going to be talking to it in a moment. So if your device is within listening distance, uh, I'm going to give all of you a compliment. Are you ready? It'll be indirect. So put your devices near your A-L-E-X-A -E device, and here it is. Here it comes. Alexa, give me a compliment. Let's get a compliment. You're all right in a supersized bag of chips. Did anybody get a compliment? Did that work for anybody? <laughs> uh, I don't know if that worked for anybody. Alexa, why are you called Alexa? Alexa is a female form of Alexander and is sometimes also a short 